Hello boys and girls, Itai here. Uh, we are in Chicago at the gate, Echo 5, and uh, this is the second of the series of uh, normal procedure flows uh, for the Embraer 175. I'm doing, I'm doing that based on the field there, Embraer 175, that's been out for quite a few years now, and uh, in hope that uh, you guys can see what we're checking when we do the... Uh, um, the normal flows and what we're checking. Uh, that being said, this uh, add-on is not perfect. Um, so I will try to point out things that I see that are not consistent with reality. For example, we already see that some ICAS messages that should be there are not actually there. Um, so, let's see. Yep, uh, so Origin receiving. What is this procedure? Uh, excuse me, the, the pre-flight procedure. Uh, pre-flight procedure. Um, again, it's not based on any specific uh, company. The idea is uh, to uh, uh, get into the airplane for the first time of the day or whenever the flight crew has changed um, or after some kind of maintenance has been done. So we basically want to check that the airplane is in good condition for the first flight uh, for us in this airplane so we're just basically checking everything not actually preparing the flight yet um, so we would get into the cockpit we would check um, some of the stuff we would check is the for example usually on the door we would have the uh, airworthiness and registration certificate uh, and the uh, uh, radio telephone certificate uh, we would check the um, the jump seater uh, audio control panel. Um, uh, we would check the uh, that both pilots and the jump seater have um, uh, life vests. Uh, that's under the uh, excuse me. That's uh, behind those seats here, um, and the uh, gloves for firefighting, as well as the uh, um, all the emergency equipment that I'm not going to go over. Uh, oh, is this? Yeah, the jump seat is actually coming. So we would get the jump seat to unfold check that everything is working with the uh, with all the connections here and uh, then we would check that we have part of the emergency ex equipment is the uh, escape ropes and on both sides the um, the uh, flashlights everything is here and uh, by the way, guys, this is based on the fact that we probably have that that there is that there's electrical power to the airplane. Okay, and and uh, um, and if there isn't, we would first do the electric uh, power up procedure. Uh, so we do have electric power right now. So then we go on with this uh, check. In the meantime, by the way, the rest of the crew can do whatever their job is this is uh, this is a check I can do on my own while the first officer is doing their own checks they might be doing the rock round at the same time the flight attendants are checking their own things um, cool so once I sat down uh, we would go into the MCDU first okay and we just want to check that the circuit breakers oh it's not modeled but there is the remote circuit breakers are displayed on the MCDU so uh, it is unclickable in the field there but uh, we would check that uh, as well as we would go to the nav uh, this is the let's see okay apparently I can't get into the nav menu but I would check the uh, nav data is current and correct version and everything and then we would have a prompt to go to position in it which is where we are right now and we just uh, GPS number one is usually the most accurate position and we just hit load uh, after that it takes us to the flight plan and uh, this is not really part of this flow but at this point we can uh, we are in Chicago we're flying to OKC today Oklahoma City uh, we can put the destination and just close the flight plan that's what's called closing the flight plan you know what I'm not gonna do that now I want to show you this as part of the as part of the uh, next procedure so we won't do this but typically we would just put the this, the origin and destination so then we can uh, act afterwards uh, initiate the uh, a cars um, but that's not really part of this flow okay once uh, the MCDU just in the position initialization 
has been set we go to the overhead and then we basically have uh, a scan flow that goes like this 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 and that so from the top down left to right so um, uh, DVD-R uh, control panel we would uh, test the uh, cockpit voice recorder um, CVR and DVD-R uh, we would check that uh, the fault that everything here is in the auto we are right now on the GPU so it is in use uh, APU at the moment is uh, off uh, everything here is in auto position uh, batteries should be on they might be in off position if we left it in, s in uh, gate safe mode as in GPU c connected but the batteries themselves might be shut down so this is the good time to get them to on cockpit lights as you see fit um, I'm not going to talk about these too much. Uh, enunciated lights, so we would click on them. It's unclickable in the field there, but we would click on them and we would uh, pretty much check all the indicator lights uh, throughout the cockpit, not just the overhead, but throughout the entire cockpit as well. So we'd press to test, check it, that everything illuminates, and then uh, let go. Dome light if we want it. Fuel panel, everything should be in auto. Passenger signs should be off to begin with. We're going to turn it to on. There should be an ICAST message uh, and uh, the caution. So we can see emergency light not armed and emergency light on. Both these ICAST messages are correct and should be there. That's what we're checking. We're just checking those uh, ICAST messages and we would also see those lights in the cockpit in the cabin, but uh, we really want to see those uh, ICAST messages and then back to armed. Once we get back to armed, uh, the, those ICAST messages should be turning off. Uh, by the way, I'm missing a steer off light over here. That's because the steering system is disconnected at the moment, uh, and it should be. So uh, right now, just just for you to know, in real life, I would absolutely want to see this uh, this uh, steer off message. If it's not there, I would click the button the, at the uh, at the uh, back of the yoke. It's right here, uh, and it's either on either side. That's the steer disconnect uh, switch, and that should be. Uh, so we can see the steer off message over here. Uh, so yeah, back to ba passenger signs. The rest I would leave as is for the time being. Then I would do a fire extinguisher test. Uh, we might have done it as part of the electrical power up, uh, but um, I'm gonna do that. If if not, that's a, that's another opportunity to do that. So I'm gonna press the test, and I want to see uh, basically handle uh, fire handle one and two illuminated we would want to see the fire extinguishing one and two APU and, and APU emergency stop button I want to see all these illuminate and also I would want to see uh, the I want I would want to hear the fire bell going off so that's the -da 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 that you hear and also the warning the ICAS warning triple chime that's a dum 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 so those two, those are two separate sounds. I want to hear them both. I would want to see um, five messages, not just two. Five messages in the ICAS, and I would want to see the both fire enunciators on the ITT. So this is an unsuccessful test, uh, but uh, that's what we are checking. That's what the fielder can do. Uh, APU control should be off. Emergency stop. For some reason, it is stopped. I would want to have it um, basically in this position that you're seeing now with no line. Um, windshield wipers off, external lights. If it's dark, we would have the logo light as well. Either way, we want to have the nav lights on. Um, and that's one of the things the first officer would want to check when they're doing the walk around. Uh, another thing is if we're looking for ice to see if there's ice on the, on the wings, we might want to turn on the inspection lights. Uh, it, again, mostly in the dark. The rest should be off for the time being. Um, obviously, the fire handles should be flush with the uh, the overhead. They should be pulled out. Um, hydraulics. Um, we don't want to see any light. We basically want to see everything in auto except for uh, electric pump 3A. That should be off. Uh, pressurization. Everything in auto. And the dump is uh, with no lines here windshield heating 
everything basically needs to be in the uh, uh, dark as in no non zero light position and auto uh, air conditioning pneumatic typically we would put the PAX cabin all the way down because over here after the after the, the maximum cold um, or the minimum temperature whatever you want to call that we would have an attendant um, position which basically brings the passenger cabin temperature control to the flight attendant um, panel so we would want to see that the cockpit is all us so we would do something like that probably the rest should be um, nothing enunciated and everything is uh, flush with the overhead passenger oxygen in auto and uh, no mass deploy light so that's it for the overhead now we can move on to the guidance panel and you may have you may know this panel from other airplanes as the mode control panel mcp we call that gp guidance panel so uh, we could already go ahead and set uh, some kind of altitude that we know we're gonna get uh, but it's not part of the actual checks so what we do want to do is the the speeds to fms there it is so we can check that here instead of showing a number in the cyan right now we would see the dashed lines because there's nothing done in the fms um, we can leave everything else behind we want to see fms 1 here and fms 2 on the uh, first officer if it's not we would hit this button here okay it could be still in in VLOC from the previous flight uh, from the localizer for for an ILS approach so we want to hit FMS to turn it into FMS 1 then we move on uh, from here if we know the uh, pr the pressure already we can uh, set it so let's see what we can tell for the pressure over here uh, we are in Chicago right now and I know that the pressure is uh, 2980 so let's set it already 2980 then we continue we would set the lighting as we wanted this is these are pretty much the the um, the screen brightness this is the flood storm light I don't want to touch because it, it changes the texture here and requires a reload this is the chart light this is the push to talk for the uh, for the air traffic control for the for the audio uh, reversionary panel it's in auto and uh, pushed um, uh, basically it's not enunciated here now we go back here we want to see no flags TKS off is fine but nothing uh, bad about any of the displays um, and it's fine to not have any FMS data right now because we did not set up anything yet in the FMS uh, now we go back to the MFD MFD um, there's two things we want to check we definitely want to check as part of this procedure the rest I'm going to show you later on in the uh, before start procedure we are in the pre-flight so in the pre-flight we want to check uh, basically uh, the emergency accumulator we can see that it's in yellow uh, I, I'm not too much afraid of it because with the, the parking brake said the chocks are still in and uh, this should fix itself once we pressurize the hydraulics later on so um, we want to check two things here the engine oil level that it's um, high enough and basically not in the yellow and we want to check that the crew oxygen is in the green okay if it's in uh, if it's in the blue or cyan uh, it means we cannot take a jump sitter and we would have to put a write-up on it uh, a, a technical log write-up on it and if they want to defer it per the MEL we would not be able to accept the jump sitter uh, if it's in the yellow uh, we cannot fly like that we would have to get it filled up before we go so those are the things we want to check in the in the MFD mult this is the multifunction display MFD this is the system status page so that's what we want to, from this page the second thing we want to check is the hydraulic synoptic page we want to see all quantities for all the hydraulic systems uh, in the green again we don't want to see into the cyan which would be somewhere lower over here so that's what we're checking here uh, continuing on this is the uh, standby we want to say no flags the standby instruments and again if we know the uh, pressure we can already set it there it is auto brake should be off uh, terrain inhibit should be pressed out and emergency parking brake uh, the, it's kind of eluding but it's really the parking brake and that's on that's why we would see not really a line here we would see the, the word on here 
Um, the ICAS and the engine display, we just want to see basically that everything looks normal as it should be. Um, oil pressure is obviously going to be low and um, the rest here is as it should. The slat flap is showing zero, APU is off, then the gear all uh, down and three green. Um, altitude right now, we should not have a landing field elevation set yet because we didn't set it as of yet. but. Uh, we basically want to see that it's normal. Um, uh, the thing is, um, it's kind of really important to check it here because if we missed that previous step, let's say we missed the uh, pressurization mode and it's right now on manual. Oh, manual. Oh, I guess I can't do it manual. Uh, it's not working, but okay, now it's LFE control. Uh, we would see this here, but we won't necessarily see a mode here. So uh, that's a sneaky one, and we really want to be able to catch that mistake. So that's a double check that we didn't miss that step. Uh, Pitrium would typically be in somewhere in the green here, and the rest should be in the middle. Uh, start stop is off. Those are all pushed in. Speed brakes up. The flaps, the uh, flap slot override uh, uh, button, the the rat ram air turbine. Uh, I guess full, it, it's okay, I mean, it's going to be full anyway because we're on the ground and the gears are down, but uh, we we don't want, basically, we don't want any abnormal stuff illuminated. Um, coming up to here, that's a good opportunity to set up the um, uh, audio control panel. Uh, we want to hear the ramp, and I'm intentionally putting the speaker to off, and I will tell you later in a bit. Uh, cockpit door. Uh, this would be a good time to check it, to test it with the, the flight attendant, uh, but this is how it should be. It is unlocked because it's open, and this is the uh, locking um, control trim. We want to test basically that the uh, three, three second, uh, basically we're checking. I'm not going to do that now because it's kind of laggy and weird. Actually, I'll, I'll just do the uh, the pitch trim, and you can see that if I pitch too much up, after three trim. seconds, we hear the word the trim, trim, trim. We also want to hear, uh, we also want to see that the trimming is stopped, so that's it's the protection from a pitch trim runaway. So uh, we would test all three axes. We want to check that the uh, system one and two cutout switches are uh, pushed um, in, and basically we don't see the annunciator. Uh, PC power, if we win it, uh, it could be in the normal position. Though both of those handles are going to be pushed uh, in and uh, in position. Parking brake is obviously set. I didn't mention that, but we want to see that set. Uh, then we cross over to the other side here. We would test the um, the my side's oxygen. Okay, and after we test it, we would see the X here. When we test it, the speaker comes on. So we want to make sure that it does. Uh, the flashlight is uh, is uh, charging. It is. Well, we want to see a red light here. So right now, it would be a bad test, basically. Um, so we want to see the red light here that it's charging because there is AC power to the airplane. Uh, it's a good opportunity to set up the um, uh, the seat controls for the uh, rudder and from for uh, where th for the for the rudder pedals and for the seat. Um, and we would check the. Uh, I would put my headset in position and I would check all the circuit breakers here as well. So remember, we have two places for the captains to check the circuit breakers, the physical ones here and the remote ones that we did in the very beginning on the MCDU circuit bre breaker page. Um, and uh, at this point, we just want to make sure that the first officer does their checks. Their checks are a lot less involved, but they're pretty much checking the same things that we did just on their side. And once they do that, we can do the pre-flight checklist. Uh, oh, one thing I obviously missed is uh, this is a good opportunity to actually check the um, maintenance uh, logbook, the technical logbook of the airplane, and uh, make sure that there's no open discrepancies over there and everything is, all the inspections are, are correct. And uh, after all of these are done, we can do the pre flight checklist. And at this point, uh, we're good to take this aircraft. If you have any comments, concerns, questions, please let me know. Otherwise, see you in the next video for the Before Start procedure.